What is intrinsic spin? This paper was given to the APS March meeting in 2019. I was taught, and I expect you were too, that orbital spin and orbital moment are due to harmonic solutions in Schrodinger's equation. By contrast, intrinsic spin is a property of the electron being a point particle with intrinsic moment. The second of these is impossible for two reasons. Moment is a product of current times loop area, and in the method of dimensions, m depends on L squared. This implies that the electron cannot be a point particle. The paper compares orbital moment with intrinsic moment. We start with numbers and models. According to Maxwell, the art of exact science is to reduce the problems of nature to the determination of quantities by operations with numbers. And according to Bohr's model, quantization is due to harmonic waves in atomic orbitals. We return to 19th century wave particle duality, which became the foundation for modern physics. Here's the wave, and here's the particle. This is one kind of particle. And it's best described by the stable wave packet. Notice three features. Omega bar is the mean angular frequency, k bar is the mean wave vector, and sigma is the coherence. It's singular, and it depends on initial conditions. You can read the glossary of symbols by typing pause. You can operate on the stable wave packet with the Klein-Gordon equation, but it's more direct to go straight to Einstein's special relativity formula and substitute for energy using Planck's law and momentum using the de Broglie relationship to find this well-known formula in simplified units. And the best thing you can do to this is differentiate it because then you find that the product of the phase velocity with a group velocity is equal to c squared, a new result in quantum physics. The group velocity is well known to you, it's the speed of a particle. In special relativity it tends to zero, at low k it tends to the speed of light at high k. And the phase velocity is faster than light, you measure it as the inverse of the group velocity, or as the ratio of energy over momentum. I described these dispersion curves in previous years to the March meeting. For example, we find that Feynman's switching principle must be switched back. He claimed that nobody understands quantum mechanics, but we agree with his professor. You must be joking, Mr. Feynman. The singularity in the phase is in fact cut off, and this is illustrated in these three diagrams, when sigma is less than k, the wave is squashed flat. Intensities add rather than amplitudes. Before I discuss spin, I have to cover two further bases, force and uncertainty. If we differentiate this, not once, but twice, we find that the curvature is the inverse of the effective mass, and with Newton's second law, it's due to acceleration over force. Notice that when the curvature is negative, the effective mass is negative, and the acceleration is negative, and this happens in the Hall effect. The Hall effect depends on the Lorentz force, which is both has both an electric part and a magnetic part. And the magnetic part is complicated because it depends on both charge and velocity. And when the charge is zero, the magnetic force is zero, as in empty states. And when the velocity is zero, the magnetic force is zero, as in lattice charges.
But how does it come about then that sometimes we measure positive whole coefficients? Well, it's easy to see if the charge is a proton or a lithium ion. The vertical acceleration is electric, the horizontal acceleration is magnetic, and the whole voltage is positive. But when the charge is an electron, it's more complicated. The whole coefficient in copper is negative and in aluminum positive. In the n-type semiconductor negative and in the p-type positive. In the low temperature superconductor negative and in the high temperature superconductor positive. In bismuth spectacularly negative in arsenic spectacularly positive. It all depends on the dispersion. When the dispersion is positive, as in this typical gamma point, the whole coefficient is negative. And when the dispersion curvature is negative, as typically on the X point in the Brewer's Brewer zone, the whole coefficient is positive. I move now to uncertainty. At time zero, the full width half maximum is the uncertainty in position. The Fourier transform of a Gaussian is Gaussian. So the full width half maximum of the Fourier transform is the uncertainty in momentum. And the important fact is this, that when you multiply the two uncertainties, sigma cancels. The dual uncertainty is a physical property independent of initial conditions. The bad news is that when you multiply these two uncertainty, the dual uncertainty has a value 16 times greater than Heisenberg's limit, whatever that may be. In questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. In questions of science, the derivation always supersedes the blind intuition. And if an order of magnitude is not worth measuring, then what is? For mathematicians, it doesn't matter. Mathematicians can create any value that looks good. They can suppose even that the electron is a point particle with a magnetic moment. But with the stable wave packet and certified uncertainty, we can model intrinsic spin. Magnetostatic knows moment is current times area, which is the same as velocity times half the magnetic radius. Consider uncertainty in the transverse plane. Try switching on a magnetic field above a passing uh, wave group. A current is induced on the horizontal plane, like diamagnetism in Meissner Oxenfeld effect or the vortex in the Abrikosov lattice. We make a second hypothesis. The moment has three components and three transverse planes, and the transverse planes intersect on the Euclidean axes. And so they're in phase and have the uh, angular frequency we plotted before uh, from relativity. And we can make four deductions. Knowing mu, we find that the magnetic radius is equal to the Compton wavelength. And the magnetic radius is 137 times smaller than the Bohr radius, the radius of an atomic typical atom. And the magnetic radius is 137 times greater than the electrostatic radius of the electron, another type of particle. Second deduction is that spin wave functions must be harmonic or else self-destructive. They are therefore quantized either diamagnetic or paramagnetic, right-handed or left-handed, spin up or spin down, 
and the terms are separated by 2 Bohr magneton stock B, as measured experimentally. The ratio of the intrinsic moment to the orbital moment is the phase velocity times the magnetic radius divided by the group velocity times the Bohr radius. We can also deduce that Pauli exclusion occurs because electrostatic forces are very strongly repulsive between two identical electrons. So what is intrinsic spin? In dispersion dynamics, it is induced cylindrical orbit within a wave function. It's like room temperature superconductivity, but without the Cooper pairs. The induced current explains Hunt's rules and Russell Saunders coupling. And we have one further conclusion. The logic of physics was determined 2,300 years ago, but is observed by obstructive neglect in the 21st century. Physics is a tug of war, with mathematicians on one side and physicists on the other. When a physicist raises his hand and says, I don't understand something, the mathematician says, we axiomatize it. And they pull on a rope and everybody falls onto the wrong side. But what they don't know is that axioms are unquestionable in math and therefore meaningless in physics because unfalsifiable. As Elijah Cummings said recently, we can do better. We've got to get back to normal.